Okay, so I'm going to start off with an easy matchup here, just to kind of uh, showcase a little bit of what this deck can do. So, this is a pretty clear mulligan in my mind. Uh, we're already starting off with a time walk, and then our hand basically dies to Wasteland or a removal spell. Um, especially because... If you, if you lead on a Dryad Arbor, like, it's just such a signal that you don't have another land, and they're just going to kill it on the spot. So, that's a uh, clear mulligan. This is a clear keep. We have multiple guys, rando wasteland, and multiple home spells. Easy game. So, Glistener Elf away. Our opponent fires back with Goblin Guide. So, uh, Tom Ross stated this matchup was basically a buy, and he is quite right. So, we're our mana short, <clears throat> or damage short, depending on how you look at it, uh, of killing him. We have 1, 2, uh, 6, 10 in hand, uh, but we need 3 mana to cast Noble and Vines. And if we just cast Vines and Invigorate, that's only 9. So, I just run out the Noble. I leave up Vines here. Um, I'm not actually sure that's like 100% right. Because Invigorate can also counter a uh, burn spell at my Glistener Elf. And I also have a backup elf. Uh, yeah, in retrospect, I'm not like 100% sure. But I didn't want to randomly get destroyed by like Fork Bolt, maybe. Yeah. No, it's not necessarily right. Um, yeah, I think that there's more arguments for actually casting the second elf there. In retrospect. Rather than leaving up vines. Uh, though I guess uh, vines stops searing, doesn't stop searing blaze, which is the actually good one that they would play in this format if they did. Uh, anyways, so he plays an Eidolon. And uh, opts to not block, and the game promptly ends. Uh, regardless of whether or not he has Fire Blast, because we would be able to respond with our other pump spell. So game two is a little bit better for him, but not significantly. So we boarded in swords, uh, both as a way to gain life, and because we actually want to clear out his creatures, uh, because burn is really good if they have a repeatable damage source. This isn't the best hand, but certainly keepable. So here's the guide on one, revealing of vines. So uh, we're going to have a little discussion about Goblin Guide timing on his next combat step. I decide to swords in response to the trigger because I absolutely don't want to lose a draw step to a land. Um, so I'm either going to draw, like I have too many lands in my hand to begin with, basically. So if I Swords the Guide and then let the trigger resolve, um, I'm going to draw a spell next turn, uh, unless I have two lands on top of my deck. Whereas if I let Guide resolve, then fetch Catacombs, uh, I have a random chance of drawing a land, basically, next turn. So I've actually made this mistake in previous videos a bunch, I think. Um, I should never make it again. So... We had to fetch Savannah, so we couldn't fetch a blue source. Uh, I opt to just cast the agent. Um, part of the thing that I had to consider was life totals there, um, but 10 is like a semi-reasonable life total to be at against Burn. Not a great one. It's very possible I could just lose next turn to like Bolt, Bolt, Fire Blast, but oh well. Um, and from here, part of my goal is going to be attempting to not get blown up by Price of Progress. Uh, and that's what this crop rotation is going to help with. So that spell pierce, um, for the record, if I did not draw this, I don't think I would have played the Nexus, uh, just on the basis of it doesn't actually cast vines, and I didn't want to get run it, or didn't want to run straight into a uh, price for an additional damage or additional two damage. I'd rather if price does four, I'm basically dead. But if it only does two, I'm okay, and I could turn the Savannah into a basic. So here, I just get to shove with the agent. counter anything he plays because at this point 
Uh, if you didn't see that, I, I countered the Lightning Bolt. I literally just want to counter anything he plays because if he gets to untap, he actually could just be in a position to play his cards and let them resolve. Um, literally trading that for any piece of cardboard is absolutely right. Because it's a draw step for him. So yeah. Um, at this point, I determined that... Let's see here. If he kills this guy here, I sell the backup Nexus, and that's fine, especially because I'm at 7 and he's on like multiple draw steps to get out. Um, it also leaves me with Nexus plus Green Green to Vines him out. That was a pretty important uh, distinction on that uh, turn. Because this would be my fourth land. But anyways, we swing, and we're in a position where we just have to Vines. Uh, because we want to kill him in two. And we're not playing this Nexus again because price plus a two damage spell is not what we want to lose to. And oh look, there's price. His sequencing's irrelevant. And wait for it. A two damage spell. So we actually win that game because we didn't play Nexus. Um the same thing would also hold against Eidolon. Um, I'm trying to think if there's like other random cards that would hold, where that exact thing would hold. But our opponent loses the game very easily because he is the slower combo deck that can't interact nearly as well.